Khoidok! Good day, fellow South Africans and citizens of the world! And last night, just a few hours ago, we had on this main Loving Life channel a three-hour discussion about what is behind the coronavirus, the vaccines, um, all sorts of stuff. And one of the really interesting points that came out during this discussion, and if you go and have a look at the, 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 the live stream, you'll actually see this for yourself, is a document which is a patent that was taken out a few years before the COVID-19 or the coronavirus appeared um, by not just a laboratory, but by the military arm of the Chinese government. Yeah, the military arm of the Chinese government were weaponizing the coronavirus. And why this is so important is because I'm looking at a Zero Hedge article where they include the key findings from the bombshell government dossier on China's bat virus program. And I'll read to you what it says. It says a leaked dossier compiled by Western intelligence agencies concludes that China lied and deliberately suppressed or destroyed evidence during the crucial early days of the COVID-19 outbreak and notes that Chinese researchers have been experimenting with and creating deadly bat coronaviruses. Here are the 15 key findings from the 15-page report compiled by Western governments known as the Five Eyes, according to Australia's mainstream media, The Daily Telegraph. A key theme of the dossier is that China's negligence and lies resulted in the endangerment of other countries, as the CCP silenced or disappeared doctors who spoke out. Doctors who bravely spoke out about the new virus were detained and condemned. Their detentions were splashed across the Chinese state media with a call from Wuhan police for all citizens to not fabricate rumors, not spread rumors, not believe rumors. Now, this is what you call fake news, what the Chinese are doing. A tweet from the Global Times on January the 2nd states, Police in central China's Wuhan arrested eight people spreading rumors about the local outbreak, outbreak of unidentifiable pneumonia. Previous online posts said it was SARS. This had the intended effect of silencing other doctors who may have been inclined to speak out. Furthermore, evidence was destroyed and China refused to provide live samples to international scientists working on a vaccine. The paper obtained by the Saturday Telegraph speaks about the suppression and destruction of evidence and points to virus samples being destroyed by order at genomics labs. Wildlife market stalls bleached, the genome sequence not shared publicly, the Shanghai lab closure for rectification, academic articles subjected to prior review by the Ministry of Science and Technology, and data on asymptomatic silent carriers kept secret. The dossier slams China's consistent lies about the virus, noting that despite evidence of human-to-human -human transmission from early December, PRC authorities deny it until January the 20th, adding the World Health Organization does the same. Yet officials in Taiwan raised concerned as, uh, concerns as early as December the 31st as did experts in Hong Kong on January the 4th. China also imposed internal travel bans while condemning the rest of the world for wanting to do the same. Millions of people leave Wuhan after the outbreak and before Beijing locks down the city on January the 23, reads the dossier. Thousands fly overseas. Throughout February, Beijing presses the US, Italy, India, Australia, Southeast Asian countries and others not to protect themselves via travel restrictions, even as the PRC imposes severe restrictions at home. The dossier also notes that China successfully pressured the EU to strike language about PRC disinformation and has threatened Australia for, con for continuing to investigate. 
As Australia calls for an independent inquiry into the pandemic, PRC threatens to cut off trade with Australia. PRC has likewise responded furiously to US calls for transparency. While the leaked dossier does not reach a conclusion whether COVID-19 is of natural origin or engineered, it includes a February 6 study from the South China University of Technology which suggests the killer coronavirus probably originated from a laboratory in Wuhan. The paper was withdrawn due to what its lead author said was a lack of direct evidence. However, the dossier notes that scholar Yang Zong Huang said on the 5th of March, no scientists have confirmed or refuted the paper's findings. That said, the Telegraph notes that the official US position is that the virus was not engineered, but that it escaped from either the Wuhan Institute of Virology or the Chinese CDC, which is located roughly 900 feet from the Wuhan wet markets, from which a cluster of early cases emerged. The intelligence community also concurs with a wide scientific consensus that the COVID-19 virus was not man-made or genetically modified, said Acting Director of National Intelligence Richard Grinelli, adding, the IC will continue to rigorously examine emerging information and intelligence to determine whether the outbreak began through the contact with infected animals or if it was a result of an accident at a laboratory in Wuhan. China's risky bat research and creation of deadly viruses. Now, this is what we were talking about last night with Teresa, with the patents, weaponizing viruses to make them weapons of war. While the international scientific consensus is that COVID-19 wasn't man-made, the Western intelligence dossier highlights research by scientists Shi Zhengli and her protege Peng Zhu, whose work on bat coronavirus Zero Hedge highlighted in January, and who are modifying bat coronavirus to test its transmissibility to other species. It notes a 2013 study conducted by a team of researchers, including Dr. Shi, who collected a sample of horseshoe bat feces from a cave in Yunnan province, China, which was later found to contain a virus 96.2% identical to SARS-CoV-2, the virus that caused COVID-19. The research dossier also references work done by the team to synthesize SARS, like coronaviruses, to analyze whether they could be transmissible from bats to mammals. This meant they were altering parts of the virus to test whether it was transmissible to different species. A November 2015 study from Zheng Li and her team, in conjunction with the University of North Carolina, concluded that the SARS-like coronavirus could jump directly from bats to humans, and there is currently no cure or treatment. The Western dossier notes from the study to examine the emergence potential, that is the potential to infect humans or circulating bat COVs, we built a chimeric virus encoding a novel zoonotic COV spike protein from the RSSHC014 hyphen COV sequence that was isolated from Chinese horseshoe bats in the context of the SARS COV mouse adapted backbone. North Carolina University professor Ralph Barrick, a co author of the 2015 paper, said, this virus is highly pathogenic and treatment developed against the original SARS virus in 2002 and the ZMAP drugs used to fight Ebola failed to neutralize and control this particular virus. A few years later, in March 2019, Dr. Shi and her team, including Peng Zhu, who works in Australia for five years, published a review titled Bat Coronaviruses in China in the medical journal Viruses, where they wrote that they aim to predict virus hotspots and their cross-species transmission potential, describing it as a matter of urgency to study bat coronaviruses in China to understand their potential of causing another outbreak. Their review stated, it is highly likely 
that future SARS or MERS-like coronavirus outbreaks will originate from bats, and there is an increased probability that this will occur in China. The report notes that Dr. Xi's research continues to this day, telling Scientific American bat-borne coronaviruses will cause more outbreaks. We must find them before they find us. Both Xi and Zhu spent three years at Australia's Animal Health Laboratory, operated by the country's National Science Agency, CSIRO. Between 2011 and 2014, Zhu arranged for wild bats to be caught and transported alive from Queensland to the lab in Victoria, where they were euthanized, dissected, and studied for deadly viruses. While the United States has since cut all funding to the Wuhan Institute of Virology, CSIRO refused to acknowledge questions over whether it was still co collaborating with the lab. The Telegraph notes that the case of Huang Yanling, a researcher at the Wuhan Institute of Virology who is rumored to be a patient zero after having been the first to be diagnosed with the disease. Then came her reported disappearance with her bi biography and image deleted from the Wuhan Institute of Virology's website. On February the 16th, the Institute denied she was patient zero and said she was alive and well, but there has been no proof of life since then, fanning speculation. November the 9th, 2015. Now these are the key dates of the cover-up. November the 9th, 2015. Wuhan Institute of Virology published a study revealing they created a new virus in the lab from SARS-CoV. December the 6th, 2019, five days after a man linked to Wuhan seafood market presented pneumonia-like symptoms, his wife contracts it, suggesting human-to-human -human transmission. December the 27th, China's health authorities told a novel disease then affecting some 180 patients, was caused by a new coronavirus. December 26-30th, evidence of new virus emerges from Wuhan patient data. December the 31st, Chinese internet authorities begin censoring terms from social media, such as Wuhan unknown pneumonia. January the 1st, 2020, Eight Wuhan doctors who warned about the new virus are detained and condemned. January the 3rd, China's top health authority issues a gag order. January the 5th, Wuhan Municipal Health Commission stops releasing daily updates on new cases, continues until January the 18th. January the 10th, PRC official Wang Guanfei says outbreak under control and mostly a mild condition. 12th of January, Professor Zhang Yongzhen's lab in Shanghai is closed by authorities for rectification one day after it shares genomic sequence data with the world for the first time. January the 14th, PRC National Health Commission Chief Ma Xui privately warns colleagues the virus is likely to develop into a major public health event. Jan January the 24th, Officials in Beijing prevent the Wuhan Institute of Virology from sharing sample isolates with the University of Texas. February the 6th, China's internet watchdog tightens controls on social media platforms. February the 9th, citizen journalist and local businessman Fang Bin disappears. And April the 17th, Wuhan belatedly raises its official fatalities by 1,290. Okay, so look, there's a huge question mark over this whole thing as to where this coronavirus actually originated. And when you look at those patents, which I will be putting links in below the live stream, and you can download them and you can read the patents, you can see who's actually, who actually owns the patents. It's a very, very serious and disturbing issue. Please remember to subscribe to be kept informed. Ring the bell for the updates. Please like this video. Please share this video. And above all, please stay safe. Bye.